Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where V takes the bullets for you. Welcome to Season 3 of Roleplay Roulette. This month's review is special, as a game we've been waiting on for a while just released. Oh yeah, Demon Hunters, baby! Woo! I cannot wait to crack this bad boy open and literally eat the pages! As you can tell, we're a little bit excited for the release of Demon Hunters, A Comedy of Terrors. Alright, so full disclosure time, we have to claim a level of personal bias involving this property. The team who created the game includes several good friends of ours. We were involved in the playtest groups, and I'm one of the key characters in the Demon Hunters monthly game that the Dead Gentleman Street. We're also Kickstarter backers. So we want to be completely upfront and honest about all this right out of the gate. We have a fair amount of personal bias. Regardless, we're going to do our best to remain as objective as possible and give this game a fair review as we can. Can. After all, a flowery, lovey-dovey, easy-on-it review does the game no favors. We're gonna take the high road on this one, so to speak. So first, a bit of background. The Demon Hunters is a series of movies produced by the Dead Gentleman in college. You might recognize that name as the creators of the Gamer series and their connection to Zombie Orpheus Entertainment, creators of Journey Quest, who also have a Kickstarter on right now. Now this isn't the first time we've covered this series. We did both of the movies in the original version of Film Inflicted Trauma, and we did their first RPG a few years ago. This marks the release of a new edition, a new engine, and a major reboot that significantly changes the game's cosmology. The world is exactly the same as ours, but imagine if every mythology from every culture throughout history was actually true. Sure, cultures have embellished the power of their supernaturals, but they existed. There are other dimensions, universe-trekking hop jockeys, rogue gods, vicious demons, capricious fairies, moribund ghosts, shape-shifting horrors, reality-bending mad scientists, wizards, witches, warlocks, wise men, and sleeping monsters that slumber beyond the veil of perceptible space, waiting for the stars to align and herald their awakening. The generally benevolent Benevolent supernaturals banded together, and so did the generally wicked ones. These various beings, let's call them the powers that be, decided that they'll have no world to fight over if they actually keep fighting over it, and signed an accord. The Treaty of Acheron, as it is called, states that no being of godlike power, be it angel, demon, or Japanese thunderkami, can take a direct hand in the mortal plane. However, our very own Lucifer discovered a loophole. It seems that Old Scratch found that there's room for somebody to take a heavier hand if said agent is not fully demonic or half-mortal, so to speak. Hell also began to hire extra-dimensionals, the aforementioned hop jockeys. The problem got bad enough that the forces of good had to start playing the same game, and thus was born the Brotherhood of the Celestial Torch. The Brotherhood is the main focus of the Demon Hunters. As the name implies, they are a conglomeration of mortals and supernaps who combat the forces of evil. Once, Hell ran its own operation with the help of independent demons and some dark gods, the Order of the Infernal Scepter. However, they were broken and haven't been heard from since. The new game introduced is a number of new elements, including greater information on the other organizations in the world. This includes a collective of mad super scientists called the Mad Workers of America in Harmonious Alliance for Humanistic Achievement, or Mwahaha for short. In addition, there is a new group called the Pound, which are basically lycanthropic eco-terrorists. The Siltmerden, who are high-stakes magical Carmen San Diego's, the Clan of the Golden Fang, a collective of literal ninja vampires, and the Sisters of Divine Retribution, an order of gun-toting, martially trained super soldier nuns. It's a world that I can only describe as f***ing awesome. The game's tone is one of over-the-top action comedy and dark humor. Also, it's highly flexible, allowing you to make basically any character you can possibly think of. The game operates on a wildly simple, fast-and-go system that is a fate-accelerated hack loosely based on the previous incarnation. Characters have six broad attributes, called approaches, and five extremely broad skills, called disciplines. Each is broad enough that they can be combined to accomplish any task imaginable. The player simply works out what they want to do, what approach and discipline is allowed, rolls the dice for each and adds them together. If it ties or beats a target number, the action succeeds. The game mercifully does not use fudge dice, but instead uses a rating that represents a die step, d4 to d12. The higher the rating, the higher the die provided. This makes up basic role mechanics. Characters also have defining characteristics common to fate, such as aspects, stunts, and advantages. Aspects are custom-made descriptions that tell what a character is like and what special things they can pull off. One can also take a special trait purchased as a custom discipline called a fringe. This allows the character to be a non-mortal by taking a trait in vampire, half-angel, or sentient garbage can who can't speak but somehow changes the course of galactic politics for generations. For once, we're not making one of those up. There's also devotion. 
This trait manages a special resource called Faith Dice. Faith Dice are basically plot points that players can use to activate aspects, boost rolls, and cheat fate. However, this is a double-edged sword, because every time a player spins a Faith Die, the DM, aka the Demon Master, gets a Demon Die. This isn't quite as good, but it can be used by NPCs to disastrous effects. Well, hello! Welcome to the training session. The Brotherhood of the Celestial Torch calls me the Athenian. Introduce yourselves with haste, that I might begin to forget your identities more efficiently. I am Dr. Stanley ZHD, foremost genius in the field of quantum conjectural engineering. I represent the Mad Workers of America in Harmonious Alliance for Humanistic Advancement. Well, that's a mouthful. What is it? It's a conglomeration of super scientists. Technically, I was expelled from super college, which is why I don't have a proper mad scientist name. However, I will show them. I will show them to rule the day they cross me. <laughs> I see. Um, okay, well, my name is Reggie, and I'm a security guard at the Castleton Square Mall in Indy. I, there was these two guys that were harassing customers, scratching and hissing and stuff, and I got into a fight with them, so the mall fired me, and turns out they were vampires or something, so these guys came and got me. And, and delivered you to me! Please understand that this means that you are either meant for what they consider to be great things, or that they want you to suffer. I'm going to go on the safe side and assume they meant the latter. So, uh, who is this guy? I don't know! I wasn't briefed on him! You couldn't have been. You see, I met this creature on a pseudo-dimensional half-plane. You should not and don't have any information on it. Uh, is it okay that you invited a random alien More to- More like demon. Yeah, I'm getting a very demon-y vibe from this one. Okay, fine. A random demon to a top-secret meeting of a top-secret hidden society? Random? Why, there's nothing random about this beast. It's a something form from a sideways dimension populated solely by literal nightmares. There, they boil from the shadows by day, and by night, they sleep and dream of small children begging to watch one last television program before bed. It fills them with unimaginable terror. What? You... what is he? If you look under its mask, you will find nothing but your deepest, most primal fears. Swarming spiders, venomous snakes, anime schoolgirls with teeth in their vaginas. Or anuses, mind you. That dimension really knows how to get things done. Um, that seems incredibly dangerous. You don't know what dangerous seems like. Would that you could understand, though. Oh, what a very shape that would be. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I suppose I've dressed your pathetic species down sufficiently. Let's begin the training session. What do you mean I still owe you the souls of 14 crossing guards for the ride back? I already paid you! Are you really going to do that? Here in front of my lick spittles? Oh, are we doing this? We are! Grab your gear and prepare yourselves! We're skipping the simulation and going straight to the field test. <laughs> Alright, first off, uh, let me go ahead and address the weird set we've got going on right here. Uh, because of a situation, we're currently unavailable to use our normal studio space. This is a temporary fix. It's, uh, it's not a great one, but we're working with it. It is very uncomfortable on the back. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we, we reviewed the first edition of the game. Was this worth the wait? We've been waiting on this for a while. Yes. Was it worth the wait? Uh, yes, it was definitely uh, worth the wait. The answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I am super impressed with the updates they made to the setting. Um, definitely I'm, the setting. Oh my god. Pretty much everything is positive. 
the old game was was very was very streamlined, but what they did is they made it even more so without sacrificing variety in what you can do with it. Yeah, exactly. Which is startlingly. I honestly feel it's even more open ended now, yeah, especially with your ability. Oh, from a critical perspective, it can be kind of hard to make a character because there is so little direction. The only problem I ever run into when I make a character is defining my powers. I, I hesitate to call this a weak spot from my perspective. It could be kind of jarring or it could be kind of frustrating to try and come up with something. Or, yeah. Like, I can see for some people it, it would make sense. Like, for me, I need hard examples. And there are examples, but it's just a little difficult for me personally. I've never had a problem personally, but I have a background in game design. Now, that is going to be mitigated. They've got a new player. Which sounds guide, awesome. Actually. Which is going to oh, have yeah. A, yeah, a lot more character examples. It's also a random generation yeah. option. And if it, if that generation system is half as good as the system that they put together for Five Minutes to Mayhem, which yeah. is in the core book right now, it's a chapter that's all about random generating the seed of an adventure. Yeah. And it is so good. It's one of the better ones of those I I've ever like seen. That. Honestly, it's possibly one of the best things in the whole game. When they were first telling me about it, uh, the I was goal, a little skeptical. I was just like, that. this never yeah. works. This isn't a good idea. And then they delivered, and... Yeah. All right, so we're going to keep playing a lot of Demon Hunters now that the final books are finally available, and we're super excited about that. We're super excited also to have Roleplay Roulette back in its third season, which is like, what, its fourth or fifth year? And check out Demon Hunters. I'm going to have links out the wazoo. These links are going to be the freshest. Buttful of links. Buttfuls. Butt magnet. Get no!